Hey everybody, name's Adam, and welcome to the first video of the channel. This channel, I'll let you guys follow along with a lot of builds I do from motorcycles to cars, side by sides. Take you along the journey, hopefully share some useful information, and uh, have a good time. So, give you a little look at the garage here. See my 63 Ford Fairlane that I'll start showing you some work I've been doing on for a while, get you caught up on the build. The 2011 Razor that I'm completely rebuilding get you brought up to date on that and then this is what we're going to be working on today this i just picked up it's a 2015 kawasaki vulcan custom now i just did have a 9090 series tire on the front installed and a 200 series tire on the rear let's go and take a look at it here so here's that 200 series tire on the rear beautiful beautiful setup 180 in the 180 original, 200 without modification. The only problem is we have this huge turn signal setup with license plate holder in the rear. So we're gonna get rid of that today with this integrated tail light setup by Bike Master. So it comes with a smoked lens, the LED integrated circuit board, and a relay that we'll have to wire in. So we'll go ahead and give you a little bit walk through here here's the front 90 by 90 tire as you see it fills in the fender gap very nicely picked this bike up on a trade-in that i had on another motorcycle that had fixed up only thing that i had to do so far is fix this handlebar riser set up this is aluminum steel bolts obviously those combinations are hard to work together so it just stripped out just had to tap put a larger bolt in nothing too radical so this bike rides great it's a 900 so decent amount of power but let's go ahead and get this thing started and uh get this process going so first thing i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna take this bolt out and get this tail light lens off so pretty simple there isn't much that holds this on there And just like that, that's out. All right, guys. So this thing comes with instructions right here that has absolutely nothing to do with the bike. Uh, as you can see here, if you just go to all other cruisers, drill two small holes through the chrome inner plate so that the yellow wires can pass through the back of the tail light, connect the yellow wires to the positive turn signals. Use O-rings to secure LED board to the poles of the lens. If you wish to slow down the braking rate, use the flasher. So, what we're going to do, and it comes with this other one for a GSXR. So, it's basically no use for me. I am going to do the install without this flasher first and show you the results of it. But first, I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And then I'm going to go up here and remove this chrome piece. For the inner part of the bulb just to see what i'm working with but as you can see there's bolts up in here you'll see the two top ones right there i'm gonna go ahead and take that loose and take his back section out so i can get a look at how the turn signal wiring is going so let's go ahead and get that off all right so you end up taking four bolts out you'll see the four right there to get this piece to come loose so it takes a 10 millimeter wrench or a 10 millimeter socket to get this off. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove those two bolts right there, take the license plate light out, and then see about the wiring on the back of these turn signals. See what that looks like. All right, so I ended up, I ended up taking those two bolts on the back off that I showed you, and then I had to actually take the two bolts off the front of this, pull the bulb, then the chrome piece will pull off and then wrestle the gasket off the socket. You have to get it up over that notch is the only thing that holds it. And then you are able to pull this back through the hole so you can release that. So next thing, 
and I'm gonna do the same thing for these turn signals. I'm gonna take these nuts off. That should release the turn signal itself, and then see if I can't wrestle some wire back through. So let's do that next. All right, so I ended up getting this housing off. What I had to do was take the nut off the back, which ended up being a 14 millimeter wrench, took the lens off here, the center section pops out, and then there's a clip that goes right into here that you pull out, and then you're able to pull this forward and basically twist out the gasket, and then you just have to work this piece out. So, the reason I wanted to get this off is to be able to look at the wiring on it. Of course, you're only gonna have two wires, a power wire and a ground wire. So when we go to do this new light, we know that we, as you can see right here, your ground and then your power, power being green, black and yellow being ground. So let's get this other side, then get this off and see what we're working with. Now, one thing I did want to show is make sure you take a pair of pliers and pull the socket out of the gasket before you try to twist out the gasket. This will make it a lot easier to get the two separated. I just want to show on the other side too, you see orange and, or I'm sorry, yellow and black is ground, green is power. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna cut the wire as close as I can to the socket, just leaving a little bit in case I would some reason ever wanna reconnect cut those so I can actually pull the wires through and take this piece off. All right, so I got the wires cut. Just make sure you keep them separated so you know which side's your right and left side. Now coming up to here, the circuit board you see has the two holes in it and came with the longer bolts right there. What that does is once you take out that inside reflector that we unscrewed earlier, these two holes actually line up. Let's see if I can get you in there to see with the original bolt. So that's why it comes with those longer ones. It's going to use these original spots to bolt in. Now, you have to run these two yellow wires, as you can see, left and right, as it says on the back of the board. We need to run those two through the back. As you can see, there's no holes here, so we are going to have to poke a small hole right here. I'm going to put it right in the center, up top, because up underneath, it is guarded by that bracket, so no mud or water can sling up in it. All right, so I ended up drilling the hole straight in the center. I used a 732nd drill bit and a wire grommet to make sure that it's sealed tight so no water can get in the lens and cause damage to the LEDs or fog up the lens. So I'm going to try this out. Directions say drill two holes, but less holes in a light lens is the better. Plus, the instructions are terrible. So I'm going to go ahead, pass the, light, the wire through, and then I'll probably get a rag and clean up fingerprints and stuff in here. Go ahead and get the uh, contact grease on it to help with corrosion. Get it plugged in, get these wires ran in, get it bolted in, and go ahead and get the lens on, and then we'll move on to the wiring. So let's get that, that part other, done. One other correction I need to make, those little O-rings that they gave is actually for putting on these posts right here so that it flushes out. And when you put it, bolt the board down in, kind of gives it, I'm assuming a little extra support according to, like I said, those terrible instructions. So, we will see. All right, guys, wires are through. Cleaned up the lens. Show you back here. Ran the wires straight back out where the other ones come through. All right, so I installed the, the board in. Actually robbed the two little gaskets that's off the lens. See if you can see them there and put them on there. I started the bolts down in first uh, and just tightened it just to where this wouldn't move because if you tighten it too tight, let me get my camera to focus. If you tighten it in too tight, you're gonna break the board and you definitely don't wanna do that. So just enough in to where it won't move. Those little grommets in the back done nothing. They must be for another bike because you're going to hit these lenses up here long before you ever hit the bottom. So right now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come down here. Again, these green ones are your power wires. What I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two 
black and yellows together. And I'm gonna ground them up here to this bracket. So it looks like it is uh, welded to the frame. So it'd be a good ground. I'm actually gonna put it right here. And what I'm thinking about doing is because I definitely don't want to put this big bracket back on because it's going to cover up this beautiful tire. So I am going to look at making my own license plate bracket to go here and come down and hold the plate. So this bracket right here unbolts off, but I don't believe it's the same width as you can tell. So I'm going to see what I can do here. But let's go ahead and get this wired in. All right, so I got the two black and yellow wires ran into one. Got it grounded up here, put it there, heat shrinked it, make sure it was all good and watertight. I always use the heat shrink um, eyes and connector tabs. They've always worked real good for me in the past. Then I went ahead and stripped these back and got them wired into the respective areas. What I'm going to do now is run inside and get the keys and make sure everything works before I start buttoning it up. All right, so we have park lights. Let's see if we can reach up here and grab the brake light. Brake light's working. Let's see if we've got turn signals. We have turn signals, but they are the rapid pace turn signal. So, in order to fix that, we're about to get to the fuse box, and we're about to put in this relay. So, I took the seat off, which, as you guys, most of you know, you just click back, and the seat comes right off. My bike, when I bought it, had some underglow on it. I just wanted to show you, this is a wiring. Look at that connector, and look at this mess of wires. That ain't going to do. We're going to have to fix that. But, I took this cover off right here. It's simply just two bolts. One here, one here, and it'll come right out. So, all right, so I finally made it into the turn signal flasher, which ends up being down in, beside the ECU, down clipped into here. I removed it, which looks like this here, is this plug on it. And I plugged in the supplied one. So now I'm gonna throw the battery back in and temporarily hook it back up. And let's see if we've got slow blinky blinky. All right, guys, so initially plugging it in, it didn't work. It just uh, stayed solid when you hit the blinker. What I found out was, is that the relay out of the box, the wires were switched. So on a Kawasaki Custom, your B side of the relay is your yellow wire that's gonna run into your yellow and brown wire. Your black side, your black wire here that's on L will run in and go to your orange side. So you want to make sure you make that switch before you go in and tear all this apart. So now we'll hit the signal. So you see, it's blinking regularly. We'll go back to the back. Here you can see it in action. Let's go ahead and do the other side. Blinking regularly. Go back, blink it in action. All right, now we'll go ahead and get all this wiring cleaned up in here from the last band, and then we'll jump back to the back of the light. All right, guys, I came back here to the back to where this bolt's in. I just couldn't live with the fact that it tightened down and was only resting on these two surfaces as that's the pinch point that it was a tension. So what I did was I used quarter inch fuel hose, cut off a three quarter inch piece to actually go on the bolt. And this will allow it to tight up against the circuit board and the backrest of where the bolt goes. It'll give it more secure and won't be so much tension on the circuit board to cause future issues. Another thing I found out is the bolts that they supplied, the head of the bolt actually rested on the bottom of the LEDs. So when you tightened it down, you weren't tightening on the board, but you were tightening on the LED base itself, which that's no good. So I actually took and uh, grinded down the head of the bolt a little bit, enough to where it would clear without hitting the base of the LED. LED. This is something you wouldn't have to do, but I am sort of a perfectionist and I don't like doing the job over again. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this bolted in and show you the end result. 
All right, with that bolted in, you can see in the back, and you can see if I can get it to focus, that the board is no longer curving to being tightened down because it is resting on the rubber pieces. You can see back here, makes for a lot better fit, and you won't have to worry about when it gets hot and it's out in the heat and cold that this thing will start bending and breaking. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get the lens on. I'm gonna go ahead, go down here, mount these two wires together, get the heat shrink on them and get them tucked up underneath. I'll show you that when it's finished. All right, so I got the wires joined together. I ended up using these red heat shrink crimps on both sides to put them together. Heat shrinked them down. That gives a good water seal against the wire, prevents corrosion and it, it ends up helping holding the wires together. Then I went ahead and uh, just basically grouped them together and then put some heat shrink over it all. This helps hold them down. Now what I, I did, I went ahead and cleaned the wires and everything to make sure there's no dirt on them in preparation to get electrical taped all the way up to the top. And then I'm going to use the wire brackets that were on there to bolt up to the top of this bracket right here and right there to hold the wires up in there and up out of the way. Now, since I'm not going to be putting that large bracket back on, I won't have a license plate light. But what I'm gonna do is, once I get this license plate bracket made and mounted where I want it, I am gonna eventually, I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna mount an LED up under here to shine down onto the license plate. That way, there is nothing hiding back here. So, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get the uh, electrical tape on so I can get everything mounted up there. I went ahead and put the lens on. So this is what she looks like with the lens. Way better than original. Blends in nicely with the bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that electrical taped up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, jump over here and fix this mess. So let's get that knocked out. All right, got this cable situation cleaned up. Looks a whole lot better. Got everything tucked away back in, put that relay back down into the original spot. Done some tape, worked, help it out. Did notice one thing, that these ain't even put on right. They are actually contacting the bike, which they should not do. So, another fix I'll have to do. Guy I got this off of, said he bought it this way from the dealer. He did nothing to it, so be careful when you're buying a bike. There's a, when you're buying a used bike, there's a lot of things that people probably have done. But here it is, here's the final, final job. Looks way better. Show you up underneath what I ended up doing. Click, ground it off a spot for the ground. Used uh, one of the original wire hangers to hold this back. This PCC hanging down is what I'll use for the uh, LED for the tail light or for the license plate light. And I'm gonna make that license plate bracket to go here. Then just taped it all up, make sure it's all nice and neat and put up there. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and get into making that bracket and getting the things cleaned up. So let me jump on that. I'm not going to assemble this all the way back together. I'll just put the tray back in it because I am going to do a nice wash and clean. As you can see, this ain't been touched in a while. So let's get to it. All right, so I actually ended up making me a hang down bracket out of some old door seals I had off of a 67 Mustang. So there's the license plate bracket that I repurposed. And then there's the bracket I made up above it. I ended up making it out of this material here because it is aluminum. It won't rust. And uh, I'll paint it black in the morning to get it to blend in. But I used that piece out of it because the ridges give it some uh, strength. And this being raised up right here also lets it sit back in. So I'll install it on the bike and then put the plate on to let you see how it looks. All right, so I threw an old plate on there so you can see how it is. Uh, Everything of it looks good. It's tucked up in there. I'll paint that bracket black. You won't see any of it. You can just see a little bit along the top here, but 
when they're up high. This is what she looks like from the back. So, a little side angle of it. Looks pretty good. Now let me kill these lights. Let's see how this looks like in the dark. All right, All right so step one, let's see if these underglows still work. Yep, so underglow is still working. So I done said I done some of that uh, rewiring there. So just curious to see if it was still gonna work. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and get this key in. As you can see, I put back the box, got it in, got everything tucked in where it should be. so there is the running light see if I can hold the camera brake light there's turn signal And turn signal. So everything's working. I am going to go to the local parts store tomorrow and see if I can uh, find a little LED to stick on that bracket back here. So come back, hit that follow button, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Mustang Jackson 67 and continue with the builds and continue helping me grow this channel. So check back and we'll finish this project. So with that, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for your support and let's keep building.